Hey guys, welcome back to Rusty Guns. So today's video is about a gun that many people don't want to say they have in their gun lock or gun safe, but they own it. They just don't want to tell you they own it. Um, and it's a gun that you know gets a lot of criticism from one particular group um, more than anybody else. Um, and it's only because of one particular feature on the gun um, and one other incident uh, with the gun. But, and I'll explain that to you because the gun we're talking about is the Smith & Wesson SW40VE. Uh, sometimes these are 9mm. This one is a 40 cal. That's why it's the 40VE. Um, also known as the Sigma. And a lot of people hate this gun. Boo! They don't, don't like it at all. So many people who own this gun, many firearm guys that owns this gun, shooters, collectors, whatever, they have this gun in their safe, but they don't tell anybody they have it in their safe. I don't mind, I'll tell you. Yeah, I own it. Um, so what is it that they don't like about it? Well, the biggest thing that they don't like about it that you hear complaints about is this trigger pull. The trigger pull is very long and very heavy. Um, I will show you. long heavy trigger pull that's the biggest complaint there's a reason for that I'll explain it to you but what's the other big complaint the other big complaint is is that when Smith & Wesson was first making these guns there's earlier models that are in like all black um, they ended up being sued by Glock because the gun is built so much similar to a Glock it's crazy so that's why so all the Glock lovers are like, oh, Smith & Wesson was just copycatting a Glock, you know, that's just a copycat Glock is all it is, but it's got that sucky ass trigger, blah, 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 blah. So kind of see where I'm going with it, yeah. Um, but the, the reason the trigger pull on these is so heavy is that um, Smith & Wesson did it on purpose. Uh, they kind of were getting feedback from law enforcement saying that they wanted the heavier they wanted a heavier trigger pull because these were guys that were used to carrying wheel guns you know old revolvers and then going to semi-automatics and you know a trigger on a glock is a little, 10 times lighter than what this one is so they designed it to be that way um, for law enforcement and the only thing i can think of is that they were trying to sell their brand to law enforcement agencies you know, getting them to buy this instead of buying a, a Glock. So that's my, you know, that part of it is just my assumption. I think that's why they were doing it. But uh, why it's so heavy is because of feedback they were getting that people wanted that heavier trigger pull to more resemble, you know, what they were used to is when they carried wheel guns. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot to complain about this gun because, and even with that, there's not a lot to complain about because in actuality you can change out the springs in this trigger and lighten the trigger up a ton you know so you can make this trigger much much lighter and an average person can spend probably 10 bucks for the springs and then take about 10 minutes so 10 bucks 10 minutes you can change it out you'll be perfectly happy if you're not comfortable with changing it out you could take it to a gunsmith they'll probably charge you 25 30 bucks maybe to do it and there you go you have a, you'll have a much lighter trigger and you'll enjoy the gun even more but let's go ahead and uh, show you some of the features and show you uh, similarities things things that people like don't like I happen to really like the way this trigger feels on my finger pad versus a Glock a thousand times more so there's that one and that one so you see how you have this kind of a straight line on there Whereas this one, you can see that it actually kind of cradles your finger pad in there a little better. And I actually like the way that feels much, much better. Um, the has the indentions right here are much more pronounced on each side of the gun than the ones that you find on a Glock, and also. When your hand fits the dovetail, since the dovetail is deeper, it sits farther back in your hand better. And when your, fing your finger and everything, everything just 
lines up perfect with that. It less it, it runs right into that pocket and rests right over it. The same way with your thumb, it runs right along there and just it just lays down nice. I mean, really nice on it. So the the grip design is really really nice. Or much, for me, it's much better than the Glock. This is true grip design, so I like this design better. Um, the uh, the slide release has a little bump out right here below it, so you don't accidentally push it up too much. Um, you can still do it, but a little bit harder. But here on your uh, Glock, you can see the even even with the bump out that. It's still easy just to push that up, but on there's the small square one. Newer ones, I think, have the larger one on it. Uh, but even these have a nice big wide one on the slide lock to lock that back. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, you've got a rounded trigger guard here versus having the more squared off trigger guard. Um, this is all my baby Glock, by the way, so the, these are not the same size guns. <laughs> um, and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you the uh, sights on this. So, on uh, Smith & Wesson, you're going to be looking at dots. Trying to do this, there we go. So you're looking at three white dots to line up, like so. And on the Glock, you're looking at like that. Okay, um, the rear sight on this is a really large piece that's back in here, um, but it only has a, it has a narrow cutout in it. You can see right there, but the piece is very large. Whereas on your Glocks, it's just one little narrow piece that just slides right in there, like that. Okay, let's go ahead and break this down. I'm gonna show you the inside of it. Oh, wait a minute, mag release. Have a, a kind of a bigger rounder button for the mag release here, and you have the kind of small rectangular one on a Glock. So I know most people are going like, "Well, you're you're kind of really pushing that gun there, Randy." You know, uh, <laughs> not really pushing the gun. Um, it's just I hate that it gets such a bad rap because of the one thing, which is the trigger pull, which is something that can be fixed. Other than that. The gun functions perfectly fine and it's accurate and it's cheaper you know so if somebody is out there and they're on a budget or whatever and they're just looking for a good reliable striker fire this has got it you know and like i said you can change out that those springs and lighten the trigger and you're going to have a, a gun that you're going to be comfortable with that you know doesn't cost you an arm and a leg or cost you very much and you know it's going to be a good quality functioning firearm I mean, I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds through this and I don't have problems. Uh, I will say one thing um, with this and other guns that I've noticed, uh, this one particular, this one likes to have uh, virgin factory ammo run through it versus any kind of a reload. There's lots of guns like that, but that's one thing I did notice with this. So um, stick with virgin factory ammo and you know, you're not gonna have problems. So let's take this part. Uh, the bottom part first do, do, do. so you can see how the designs are quite similar again this is my baby Glock I should grab my other one so you guys can see one that's roughly the same size let me grab the other one real quick alright I got the other one here real quick Show you that one because it's since it's it's going to be closer to being the same size, so it'll be, be a little better there. So there you go. So very very similar designs on these, and then I'll show you. slides very very similar 
So now there's uh, one other thing here. When you take it apart, it comes apart just the same way your Glock does. Uh, even the firing pin, assim firing pin assembly and taking the back plate off, all done exactly the same way a Glock's done. No difference. Now here's here's a, here's a big difference between the Glocks and these. With a Glock barrel, you're not supposed a Glock factory barrel. You're not supposed to be shooting solid lead bullets through those, okay? Because the rifling pattern that's in those can actually scrape off some of the lead as the bullet's passing through, and can cause you to get a squib load, and then cause a major malfunction. With the Smith and, Smith and Wesson, it has lanes and grooves as the rifling pattern, so you can fire solid lead ammo through this all day long. Uh, so you can actually fire cheaper ammo and fire more. So anyway, that's another difference between them. Kind of a bigger difference. One of the bigger differences, I guess, as far as that part goes. Um, but yeah, and it goes back the same, goes back together the same way. So there you go. I mean, it it's a good gun. There's nothing wrong with the gun. Don't be afraid to take the gun out and shoot it, or show, or take it to the range and shoot it. Don't let people, oh, you got that old Sigma, you know, that's a piece of crap or whatever. It's not, you know, yeah, trigger sucks. Change the springs, lighten the trigger up. Do that, and then the next time you go to a range and somebody says, oh, those things are crap, they have this terrible trigger pull on it. It's like, here, shoot mine. And let them shoot it and be like, they'll, you know, be like, holy crap, I know, that's not bad at all. I, that's, Nothing like what I thought or heard about, you know. So anyway, there you go. The gun nobody wants to say they have in their safe. Right here on Risty Guns. The Smith & Wesson Sigma. Take care, guys. Uh, tell me what you think. Yay, nay, no, screw you, whatever. Uh, whatever. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.